you know like when you're going to a party or something and you say well is it hot outside or is it cold outside what should i wear and someone says to you why don't you layer well that idea about layering is that you put multiple layers of clothes on and then depending on if it's too hot or too cold you can start to take them off depending on your opinion and in photoshop Layers are kind of the same thing, is that you have different things on different levels that could then be turned on or off or moved around, just like layers of clothing. Oops, I think I put that one on backwards. Oh well. And so in my opinion, if you're using Photoshop and you're not using layers, I feel like you're not using Photoshop at all because, you know, layers were back, way back around Peltdown Man or something, and I feel like that you could do a lot of things that you could do in Photoshop now, years ago, by just using layers. So I feel like it's a fundamental part that you need to really understand. And for you to work non-destructively in Photoshop, which is a big deal, that means not ruining your original image, then you've got to understand layers, and you've got to understand how to move them around. So, starting to really bulk up here a little bit, so I think I should discontinue my layering. I think this should be enough for the evening. I want to show you these beautiful stack of drawers here. Um, these were originally, I think, for these are print files. Um, amazingly big drawers. And they're an excellent way to think about how layers work. So, what I want to do is start with the bottom layer here. I'm going to use a, a document that has one, two, three, four layers. And I'm going to start with the bottom layer here. So this will be my background layer, white. Okay, so now that we've determined that we have a white background layer, it's getting a little warm in here. I'm going to have to unlayer, if that's a word, delayer. Okay, um, this layer is called background. And in Photoshop, whatever your first layer is in your document, it's always by default called background. What this word does is it forces this layer, no matter how many layers you get, to remain on the bottom of the stack. So when it says background, this one cannot move up in the stack unless I rename it. So it's the actual word itself that, that actually makes it Photoshop recognize that that should be locked and on the bottom. Now you can rename it, I'll show you that later. In my first layer, on top of the background, I'm going to put saltines. Remember these? You eat them and you try and whistle. So, I'm going to put saltines on this layer. And because that's now visible, you will see next to it a little eyeball. And the eyeball, if you click on the eyeball, will make this layer invisible or visible, just like that. Now, on my next layer, so this, this one is visible. On my next layer, I'm going to put the famous Ritz camera. I hope they don't sue me or anything. <laughs> I'm still bolted up here. Hold on. Got a couple layers off. I'm going to put Ritz. A lot of Ritz. Two boxes. Now, Ritz are my favorite. And now, this layer will become visible. So I place the eyeball there. And for my last layer, oh yeah, cannot forget the goldfish. Whew. Goldfish, top layer, top of the stack, top of the pancake, baby. Okay, so this is a nice layer of beautiful goldfish. And now I'll give it its own eyeball so that it shows that it is visible too. So now I have four layers, uh, goldfish, Ritz, saltines, and a white background. 
I could take the eyeball off of the goldfish and they'll disappear. They're still within the document, they're just not made visible when you take away the eyeball. Or I could take away the Ritz and only have the saltine showing, or take away the saltines and only let the goldfish show. So this clicking on and off of the eyeball leaves a layer within the document, but lets you view one at a time in case you're doing editing just on one layer. Okay, so now, just because you could make them visible or not visible within your document, there's a couple other things that I'd like to talk about in terms of how you navigate and arrange layers. Um, let me just get a few more layers off here. Get back to it. All right, so now, what I'm gonna do is take my top layer here, which, if I recall, is the goldfish. Oh yeah, there they are. I'm going to take the goldfish and switch them with the layer that has the ritz. So, take this one out. It's kind of difficult. It's a lot easier in Photoshop, trust me. And now, I'm putting the goldfish, was, which was at the number top position, I'm putting the goldfish in the second position. And now, I'm going to put the Ritz on the top. And take a look at what that looks like. It's quite a different looking image, just by rearranging the layer order. Now, what if I change that? What if I put the saltines on the top? isn't this noisy either. And I'll put the writ on the bottom layer. Saltines on top. Take a look at that. Okay, and that's what that looks like. Now, what if I want to put the background up? I was going to put the background on the top, but it won't won't open. Why? Why is that? Remember I told you that background, if it's called background, that language forces it to stay in this stacking order. So what I'm going to do is double click on it and in this case I'll just rip it off and rename my background layer 4. And so now, if I wanted to, I don't think this would be a good idea, so I can take the goldfish out and put the background, which is just a white layer, into my second position. And guess what I'll see if I do this? This is a solid white background. And because I just named it layer four, I was able to unlock it basically and move it. And then I'm gonna put the goldfish on the bottom. Well, is this any good? I don't know, because what is going to happen is this is a solid surface of paint, basically. So the only layer that will be visible is going to be the saltines on a white background. And these two layers, the Ritz and the goldfish, are going to be invisible, even though the eyeball is still turned on. Now, I could actually turn off the eyeball of the background and leave it invisible, and then I'll be able to see all my three layers again. My saltines, the background will be hidden because the eyeball's off, the Ritz, and the goldfish. So you can see how stacking order really changes the look of your image. And when I pull these all out, you can see how that works. Let me put the background back down to the bottom because I don't think that's a smart idea when you have a solid surface. So, oh, almost lost it. This is a very physical job teaching Photoshop. I never knew it. I thought teaching computers you sort of lose the strength in your neck, but it's a good workout teaching Photoshop. I got the Ritz, I got the saltines, 
I don't like this. I want to change it. I want the. I want this layer on the second row. I want the saltines on the bottom, like I had them before. And now, let's put the goldfish on the top. So you can see that it's a lot easier just to click and drag these different levels of layers around and create an image. When you flatten an image, which will be covered in a later um, video, all of these layers just go down into one. But in this case, I want you guys to keep your layers on separate levels for as long as you possibly can for editing purposes. Hmm. Still the Ritz are the best.